Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning back in. Now, it's bloody cold today, but uh, you'll notice that recently there's been a bit of a fuel shortage issue, especially with diesel. Now, you might be wondering, with that said, about electric vans and how much bang for buck you can actually get in the electric van market. So with that said, for £9,000, I would like to present to you the possibility of the Renault Kangoo ZE. Take your time. Sorry, old boy, as you were. Uh, can't, have the, can't do this review out the keys, good sir. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, old chap, I forgot. Lovely, let's get into it. So, the Renault Kangoo ZE. Now, it isn't new, all right? We actually, this is the first van we bought that isn't new. It's second hand, uh, 17 plates, uh, and it's a good little runner, 10,000 miles. A uh, few, admittedly, a few dents and scrapes. I'll, uh, let me walk you around the vehicle first. You get an idea of the, the look and feel of it, you know? Now, this one is all electric only. It is the 22 kilowatt hour battery, and you just charge it up there in the front charging port. But when I bought this one, a uh, bit of a kerfuffle. I bought this one under the, it was under the assumption it had a 33 kilowatt hour battery and it only came to my attention when I was driving home that actually it only had a 22 kilowatt battery because I didn't make it home. So, but to be fair, I actually paid, I paid 10,000 in the dealer for it and the following day when I realised it actually didn't have 33 kilowatt hour battery advertised, I got in touch with them. Uh, actually, it's Hendy, to be fair. And they were very, very amicable. They took a thousand quid off and they gave me a couple of free goodies as well. So to be fair to them, um, yeah, banging company actually. Their after sales service I thought was banging. Um, so yeah, charging port in the front. Uh, front wheel drive, obviously. Now, specification wise, it's a little thin on the ground. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you. Now, I, I admit you know, that it's not the most high-tech interior. Um, it does have some good features, you know. Uh, it's got a top-of-the-range, uh, you know, infotainment system. Very, very high-tech. Uh, no air conditioning, obviously. Uh, but it has. The, the thing that I'm particularly proud of is the factory-fitted rear dash cam. I really think that the you know, the craftsmanship uh, into building that, I thought was, it's, it's first rate, uh, Lego man. Uh, factory fitted smelly, um, it, it really stinks. Uh, interior lights, uh, halogen, of course. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the dash is also quite a simplistic design. There's not really a lot of uh, there's not a lot of information. You sort of stop and start, and that's basically about it. But you know, all things considered, it is it's a cracking little runabout. Uh, 22 kilowatt hour battery. It's not the one I'd hoped for. But that said, I can still get even fully laden, which you'll see in a second in the back. Even fully laden, uh, running around the city, I can get 80 miles. On a full charge with all my tools and equipment, roof rack, ladders on it, I can still get about 80 miles. So if for city driving it's okay. The 33 kilowatt hour battery, it would give you more range. You know, I could go from here to Oxford, you know, you could do longer runs. But for this one, I'm just resided to the fact it's only a city vehicle now. But it is a cracking little van. Uh, I'll show you around the, the outside of it. It's a few dents and scrapes, which I'll uh, I'll point out now. Now, before I get into the imperfections in this van, there are a few, there's one or two design, little design features I do quite admire. The first one being the fuel filler cap. If you ever get this, because obviously all electric, if you ever get the nostalgic feeling to fill up with diesel, you can just open the, <laughs> you can open the filler door, but they've just blanked off the cap. I'm guessing it's for production, but it's just cost, isn't it? It's just easier, rather than making a whole new body panel, they just keep it, and it's actually cheaper just to leave it all in place and just blank it off. Now, the other thing that did make me, uh, it did tickle my funny bone is uh, the tow bar. Now, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why, why this electric van's got a tow bar, especially a Kango. I think the, I think when they bought it from the factory, I think they were being a bit optimistic with its towing capacity. But uh, yeah, it's, it's there. If I actually don't even know how much this can tow. Uh, half a ton, 700 kilos max. I don't think it could tow any more than that, but it's there if I need it. Um, imperfections uh, on the bodywork, there are a few to be fair, it is, uh, you know, four or five years old. Uh, brake lights, uh, in the course of somebody fitting the rear camera, 
Uh, we do have a slight brake light issue, which I believe is being held on with silica, uh, but it is functional. The camera is a little overexposed. I find that in really sunny weather, you have to use what's called the bump and stop method rather than relying on the picture on the screen because it's so overexposed, you can't see it. Uh, around this side of the van, uh, steel wheels all the way around with hubcaps, uh, nice and heavy and inefficient, but inside is the most important bit. Uh, it's the Sortimo interior. Now, we got this because this was purely just going to be a runabout van. It wasn't designed for you know, long distances. It was never going to be, have that. We wanted the 33 kilowatt battery, but it was never going to be for big long distances. But we did want it to be racked nicely inside. So we gave it to Sortimo and they sent it back and this is what we got. Now, I was not sure, admittedly, when we got this Kangoo, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be suitable for our needs because I actually didn't think it would be able to contain everything an electrician would need or the majority of stuff for like everyday call outs and breakdowns. I can categorically tell you that's not the case. This van, honestly, we've got both the Renault Traffics, we've got the Renault Master and we've got this Renault Kangoo. Out of all of them, this honestly fits the bill for the most work. For just everyday breakdowns and call outs, you'd be amazed how versatile this little van is. It just it just works and you don't need to carry so much stuff. Um, but nonetheless, Sortimo did do an excellent job. Uh, the only spec that I gave them was just keep the racking as far back that way as possible to give us as much room here as we can. And we just wanted underfloor sliders, which they've given us. So on this side here, they've just put the normal SR5 racking. Uh, we've got a random, just a random drop box there for bits and pieces. And then, you know, your back boxes, joint boxes, blank plates. One of the pull-out trays, because I love these trays. We've got them in both the Traffics and in the Renault Master. Brilliant, brilliant bits of kit. Uh, they're just great to pull out and just take onto jobs with you. Really, really good. So we only got one of those on this van and then just some more pull out tubs. And then we have the clamps on the floor, which the, they sort of fitted themselves for the Bosch boxes. Now, what I would have liked to have done was to put these Bosch boxes in the racking. But the problem is, if you do that, then you lose the space on the rack for all your small sundries and bits. So it just made more sense to have the Bosch boxes at the very back of the van and you can just take them on and off as you need them. And you just stack them like this. And they're just the clamps that sort of fitted onto their flooring. At the front of the van, we just got a little din rail for some of the spare fuses, fuse box, uh, Schneider, BG, Chint, the ones that we come across mostly doing remedial stuff. Um, but they did fit this rack. Now, I do like these, and it's the same system they use on their roof racks. It's the ratchet system with pull-out hooks. And they're great if you want to secure stuff like bags, just like we've done here. You can, If you've just got stuff which rolls around in a van, you just literally take your ratchet strap, click it in, bang, that's it. And it just holds it and you can just tighten it up super, super fast. So that is a really good addition. I do like that from Sortimo. It's a really, really excellent product. Um, at the back of the van, I'll show you now. Now, as you know, little Kangoo, small van spaces at a premium, which is why I asked for underfloor storage. And I've got that on all of the vans. I think it's really, it's, if you don't have it, it's just wasting space because you just end up having high up space, which you just don't ever end, you just don't use it. So they gave me, two pull-out drawers here, lower and upper. And uh, this is actually James's van. This is the one that James uses for most of his day-to-day -day work. So he just keeps the Bosch batteries, 12 volts, 18 volt stuff, drill bits, hole saws, just all the usual odds and ends that you just want to pull in and out quickly to get to them. These shells can hold up to 100 kilos. You wouldn't think it, but they're really, really strong. They're really, really strong pull-out drawers. They can hold a huge amount of weight. And then the lower one is just all of the sundries, extra ratchet straps for the roof, which I'll show you in a second, because that's such, it's such a brilliant system for fast loading and unloading. Uh, heat alarms, uh, smoke alarms, we get through those constantly, especially if you're doing things like EICR, remedials and stuff, and you're just changing smoke detectors. Uh, non-maintained spots, uh, waterproof sockets, just a little selection of lamps. They, again, just all the stuff that you use just going in and out of customers' houses every day. It doesn't have to be as intensive as a run of traffics, which are part back there, but just the main stuff that you use all the time. A little four tread set of steps. All the vans, again, they carry the power banks. Uh, we use the ones from Power Oak, uh, which they sent to us. Thank you very much, Power Oak, because I can confirm these are superb bits of kit. Uh, I think you've seen these on a couple of our pieces of content now, but just a pair of power sockets at the back. You can pull a kilowatt, so you can, you know, especially if you're doing a board change on the ICR or something, customer can plug in the TV. You know, they can plug in if they've got a little toaster or something, they can plug in, you know, router, TV, internet, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, brilliant bit of kit, highly recommend those. Uh, other drawer is just what James keeps his cable in. So yeah, again, just a selection of cable. 
But you see what I mean about the drawers? They just, they, they use, they save so much space, especially if you've got a little van like this. Brown, green, yellow, blue sleeving, and then just a, one of Sortimo's Pro Click bags, which we just keep silicon guns in, that sort of stuff. And then this side here, um, I quite like the way they've done this. They kept a narrow, they kept a, a narrow pull-out drawer rather than a large one to give you more space down the side to keep long items like your rods and stuff, which I quite liked. Again, I didn't go to Sortimo with a plan as such. I said, just make the most of the space that's in there. And this is just what they came back with as a concept. And I just said, okay, great. Can I ship the van up to you? And they said, yeah, because you don't have, that's the other thing. You don't have to take the van to them you can just pay a courier and they'll just ship the van. They just do the whole lot. I think from here to Manchester, which is where they, they're racking, their, where their unit is based, I think it was like 150 quid to get it shipped there. It was, you know, for what it was, it was really cheap. I couldn't drive it there because I can only do about 80 miles on a charge. I mean, I could drive it there, but it would take me about four days to get there. But yeah, this drawer here, that pulls out again. Um, and we just keep an assortment of whisker boxes, glands, 20s, 25s and uh, some Copex, metal bat boxes, zip ties. Again, just all the stuff that you use all the time. Ah, oh, the roof rack, I can, uh, a bit of a stiff door. The roof rack, uh, it is a good bit of kit. And again, it's got the same system as what I showed you at the front of the van. Now this system here is the three bar Sorsimo system with the side rails on the side, which I really think those are great. If you have the option of side rails, get them because you can tie stuff like din rail, trunking if you're just going to a job. I'm not a fan of leaving trunking on the roof, especially if it's white trunking, because it just marks. When you leave it on the roof of van, it just, it gets weathered, it marks, and it never cleans up well. But if you're just going from, you know, if you're just taking it from the wholesaler to a job, just zip tying it to the side rail works really well. Uh, but yeah, the main thing I wanted to discuss is the ratchet system, because I really think it's such a clever, such a super fast system, which just works really well. So you basically buy these ratchet kits that are designed to click into this roof rail. And they literally, you just got a hook, it clicks in like so, bang, that's it. Your ladder is secure and that's it, off to your next job. And they are properly heavy, big, solid ratchets. And then just to release them, it's just, again, like a normal one, click, click, unhook it, take them off. What I like is just the way they click in. It's super fast and easy. That's the main thing for me, which sells it. And then on the very back is a roller, which is good for, again, eight treads and stuff. You don't have to just lift them. I mean, it's quite a low van anyway, but it is nice. If you've got heavy, awkward stuff, use the roller just to get it on the back of the van. It saves you denting the back doors. You know how you see vans which don't have it and the top of the back doors is just dented and damaged? You don't get that if you've got a roller. So that's the roof rack. The only downside that I find with this vehicle is the charging system because it's a slow charger. It only charges at 3.8 kilowatts, I think it is. It is a slow charger. You can't pl you can plug it into a 7 kilowatt wall pod or the Source London pods on the side of the road. You can plug it in. It'll only charge at 3.8 kilowatts, though. You've got to time your journeys. That's the only thing, really. The newer vans, the latest model, they've all got rapid charging. But this older model here, I mean, it's 17 plate, but the older model didn't have it. So you just if you're buying an older one like this, just be aware that just make sure you start your day in the morning on a full charge and you'll be all right. But beyond that, that's pretty much it. If you've got comments, questions, leave them all below. And as usual, thank you very much for watching. All the links come up on the screen now and we will see you on Monday.